one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And roll call. Councilor Baybine. Present. Councilor Donovan. Here. Councilor Katerina. Here. Councilor St. Clair. Here. Councilor Blade. Here. Councilor Hayes. Here. Council Chair Holbrook. I am here. And um, item number four is general public comment. But before um, we kick off with that, I do have just one little announcement to make. And I'm going to go ahead and let Tom introduce it. Yes. Um, before my time, I'm told we used to have an old uh, traffic light actually up here in the corner uh, <laughs> that did red, uh, amber, and uh, green, amber, and, and red to indicate to speakers uh, uh, how much time they had or a uh, warning when it was going to run out. We're actually demoing a, a simpler system tonight, and you'll see it here at the podium. Huh. And so essentially it's set, preset for a three-minute time limit for each speaker. Uh, at one minute, the amber light will go on just as a warning, and then the red light will start flashing uh, when time is up. And we've kitted, but we've not installed it. There's no trap door underneath there. <laughs> uh, so bear, bear with me. I'm trying to run that technology tonight. I think it should go smoothly, though. Fingers crossed for, for a good go with the first round of it. So um, so now we'll go ahead and open up for general yeah, public comments. Yeah, we want to test it out. <laughs> um, if you'd like to speak, please go up to the podium, state your name and address, and you have three minutes. And I think that's the first. So, <laughs> Come on, I want to try it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. He just totally killed Tom Spender. Hey. hey. Um, uh, yeah, go right ahead. Oh, there we go. No, I've yeah. got to thank you. Um, I'm at Downtown Point, and I have a couple of issues that I want to address to the council today. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't we 
light there, and Lord knows we have enough light in Scarborough. Um, and my next question about that is, where will all the parking go? Well, evidently, we have to tear down the basketball court and the tennis court in order to make them So I, I think that's a really important thing to do. I think that the title should be, um, instead of new site for the rink is considered, that you should put, if you really want to get people's attention, right, you know, we're going to tear down the tennis courts and the basketball courts to, to put a, a private group <coughs> I can also tell you this, um, 55 people, 55 kids signed up for the swim team and they lost themselves over to the Cape Pool. So I, I, I was just thinking this town, more people would be interested in a, a pool and a hockey pool. Um, and my last, my last issue is I don't want the town to cut the hockey committee away. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to speak for general public comments? These are general public comment is for non agenda items. All right. Seeing none, I'm going to close the public comment and we're going to move ahead to item number five, which is the minutes of the November 19th <coughs> meeting. Move approval. Second. And any discussion? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor? And that is unanimous. So <coughs> moving on to item number six, adjustments to the agenda. There are none. And item number seven is treasurer warrants, which I will get to um, as we go along the <coughs> Which brings us to order number 14-89 is a 7 p.m. public hearing and second reading on the proposed amendment to Chapter 405 Scarborough Zoning Ordinance to amend Section 4, definitions. Def remember my Roman numeral. And um, real quick, Tom, if sure. you could, if you could just go over that, Doc. Yes, yeah, so this uh, matter has come before the council by way of the uh, Scarborough Housing Alliance, and essentially they're looking for, at this point, a very simple and uh, but, but important modification to the all-important definition of affordable housing that exists in the zoning ordinance, and it is changing uh, the, the way that uh, eligibility is calculated from 120 percent of uh, ho uh, Area median income. household gross income mm -hmm. um, or family um, median family income excuse me as defined um, through uh, published indices <coughs> to 80 percent so it's significantly improving and, and, and I would say uh, certainly making properties uh, that much more affordable uh, that qualify for this program. <laughs> Beyond that, there's a simple language change that doesn't affect the, the, the real meaning of uh, the definition. It just clarifies it. Um, so I apologize for my jumbled words there. I'd, I'd also notice uh, for your attention that the planning board has taken this matter up and uh, mm -hmm. they do recognize that these are good improvements uh, to the ordinance definition and recommend that, um, your approval. <coughs> All right, we'll go ahead and open up um, the public comments for public hearing. So if there's, if there's anyone that would like to speak on this matter, please come to the podium, state your name, address, and you have three minutes. All right. So seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing, and <coughs> is there a motion? So moved. moved. And so we have a first with Kate and a second with Bill. And um, discussion. So, can you take it? Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, I, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, this is something that I feel pretty strongly about. Um, I think there needs to be more affordable housing in Scarborough, and it looks like we're finally making some good movements toward opening that up a little bit. And I'm grateful and appreciative of the time and energy it took to, to do this. So I would I will will be supporting this. And Jim Marie? Uh I also um, am pleased to see some efforts towards uh, increasing affordability for housing in Scarborough, because Scarborough is a very expensive town in which to buy property or to rent. 
Um, I'm hoping also that we work together as a town to create more opportunities for people to have places to live. So, uh, I also will be supporting this. Sean? Yeah, um, I'm not sure if the town manager or someone else can answer this. How does this uh, um, compare to other communities? Are we, uh, by our change, are we consistent with them? Are we more aggressive? What's our position? I would say 80% is far more consistent with other towns that have local programs. There's not, frankly, many towns that do. 80% uh, is also something a uh, percentage that rec is recognized uh, most commonly in state statute and state policy. So uh, it's much, much more in line. Great. Thank you. Uh, and any other comments? All right. Um, so I, I would just say I, I'm very happy um, to see this in front of us. Um, as Tom pointed out, um, it, it's a fairly <coughs> standard in, in for the industry. 80% um, is what happens in other communities. <coughs> it's what's referenced as the definition in the state statutes as affordable housing. It's also, realistically speaking, um, it, when it comes to the financial side of things too, the, the other side, not just the builder side, but the, the financing side is probably a little more in line with um, the ability um, of getting approvals and those sorts of things for the individual person. Um, the other thing to go from the 120% threshold down to the 80% threshold is a 120% of area medium income for Scarborough means a household somewhere in the vicinity of 325, which is market, and that's already you know a healthy, stable area. So our target is to bring it down to 80, which is more of that wor workforce. So that's that you know firemen, policemen target group. Um, so I'm, I'm very pleased to, to have this in front of us, and um, I do look forward to there are likely other things coming down the road at a later time to also help with this um, with affordable housing. So, um, all right. So the, all those in favor? And that's unanimous. There is no old business, old business at this time, so we're moving to new business, which is order number 1499, act on the recommendations for council chair liaison committee board appointments. And that is this document, correct? This is my correct. Okay. So before I go naming naming off all of these these things, um, I, I do just want to say I, I did spend some time talking to Jean Marie, um, and, and her and I both went over this list and um, feel very comfortable and confident with it. Um, we did strive to make sure every counselor received one assignment that they did request. However, um, which is great news for certain committees, there was a lot of interest <laughs> in, in some, and some that were somewhat orphaned and needed to be filled. So um, again, you know, we, we spent a considerable amount of time looking at your strengths, your other committee as council committee assignments, and what might play well um, with your liaison appointments. And um, the appointments for liaisons will be as follows. ADA Advisory Committee is Kate Sinclair. Board of Education is Sean Babine. Coastal Harbor Committee is Peter Hayes. Conservation Commission is Jean Marie Katarina. Scarborough Community Cha Chamber of Commerce is Bill Donovan. Eastern Trail Alliance is Ed Blaze. Employee Incentive Committee is Ed Blaze. The Energy Committee is Bill Donovan. The Firing Range Committee will be Jessica Holbrook. The Health, Safety, and Security Advisory Committee is Kate Sinclair. Uh, the Ad Hoc P Historic Preservation Committee is Councillor Holbrook. The Housing Alliance is Councillor Holbrook. The Library Trustee is Councillor Kate Sinclair. The Long Range Planning Committee is Jean Marie Katarina. The Planning Board will be Councillor Ed Blaze. For SEGCO, we will have two representatives, which is Sean Babine and Bill Donovan. For Senior Liaison, we have Peter Hayes. For self shellfish, con <laughs> <laughs> shellfish Conservation will be Councillor Peter Hayes. For Transportation Committee will be Peter Hayes. And then for our outside committee and board assignments, we have um, COG General Assembly for Jean Marie Katarina. Eco Maine will be Councillor Sean Babine. MMA Legislative Policy Committee is um, two counselors, which will be Jean Marie Katarina and Bill Donovan. PAX Policy Committee is also a two counselor assignment. That is Sean Babine and Kate Sinclair. And we have, as for um, 
communications, which is a new, new, a new role and a new assignment, will be Counselor Kate Sinclair. Uh, this is in the form of a motion. And before we move first and second, I just have um, one other um, quick little note. Um, if you are at any time unable to attend any of your liaison assignments, mm -hmm. please let either Jean Marie or I know, and we will make sure to, that one of us is there in your stead. Um, one of the biggest roles for this year is certainly going to be communication. So we want to make sure that we're, you know, not missing out and everybody's, you know, interconnected and still talking and moving forward. So again, that was in a form of a motion. Is there a second? Second. And discussion. I'd say thank you, but I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get right under the bus? <laughs> Can we get like a copy of that? We will. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Um, any other discussion? Okay. Seeing none, all those in favor? And that is unanimous. Um, <coughs> live, there was one other thing I wanted to say, and I'm sorry. <laughs> we will likely have our um, council goal setting the next. 17th. Yeah, the 17th will be our, our next meeting. So um, I will try to have Cody circulate that list to you um, hopefully tomorrow. While we have our goal setting, if you can think of your new committee assignments or maybe, maybe even your old committee assignments, uh, while we do our goal setting, if there is something that you think is a good initiative for, for, for that committee with some strategies of, of, how, of something you might like to accomplish for that committee this year. Um, so thank you very much. And moving on to so the next item is order number 14-100, act on the request for the ice rink site evaluation committee on its recommendations for a proposed location for an ice arena subject to the terms of a land lease to be negotiated once all requirements of the memorandum of understanding with FOSH group are accomplished to the satisfaction of the town council. And that is public comment, correct. Right. And so at this time, we will be taking public comment on this item. Please come to the podium and state your name and address, and you have three minutes if you'd like to speak. Well, I really hope this year it goes, goes. <laughs> <laughs> we do. Thank you. Okay.
understanding when uh, Wentworth was in process uh, early in the school. They looked at that site and it was determined that it was not suitable. Um, I was interested in this from the planning board, certainly the board, what would possibly make that happen. What sort of the cost to the town of buying the land to offset the wetlands being used? Well, what is also the cost of the town of relocating the um, festival course and test uh, Finally, in regards to all oh, the other things, and I call them that, but the impact on the wetlands, the people that are already there, Scarborough Library, as well as the people I knew, I am a lot of time, I do ask for a few more minutes. I won't take long, I promise. I'm not looking for the trap door. <laughs> 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 Anybody else wish to comment during the public comment section? Okay. Name and address, please.
because I couldn't mow down there. Well, finally, in February, I put a pipe in. And then, just recently, I put in another pipe. And it, the February one worked pretty well. The backyard dried up. Even the, even the wooded area in back dried up. And we started getting, uh, moving the woods back, cutting it back. And uh, so everything was looking good. Now you want to put a, a hockey rink, using up more space, moving more water my way, and not just my way, I just happen to be the lowest point. But uh, I mow the next two houses, Terry, Terry's house, he's in a wheelchair, and the next house, Sally's, and I've seen their yard get wetter and wetter. Uh, it's not as bad as mine because I am the lowest point. I begged the town councils to just put in a retention pond between us and your property. Because you do it between the, the library's got a retention pond on the on their side protecting them from all the building that you did with the schools. You don't care about us. And obviously, if you did, you would have Green Needle Drive there on that map. One council, one councilor has been down to the house over over the years, uh, Tim Downs, I believe. He was a one-term guy. He came down and looked at the situation over. The rest of the councilors never, ever came down and looked at the situation to see what I was talking about up here. I'm ashamed of the council. I'm ashamed of the city managers that have been here. <coughs> because it's a legitimate problem. And to build more there, you're just going to put more water in. in, in, in. <laughs> They said all oh, the when the high school got built, well, we've made arrangements for that. We've made arrangements for this new school that's just got built. Your, your time is okay. coming. So I just I love the hockey rink idea. I want to see it built, but I don't want to see it built in the Green Needle Drive area. I don't think any more building can we can take it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that wishes to comment? Um, all right, thank oh, go ahead. State your name, address, and you have three minutes. Hey, my name is Thomas Eschner. I live at 11 Pine Lodge Drive. I'm here on my own behalf, although just for full disclosure, I will acknowledge that I was formerly president of the Chamber Library Board of Trustees. I uh, was not aware that Ms. Cole was going to be here until I walked in and sat down next week. So I'm here on my own behalf. Um, I sent a letter to the council last evening. I don't presume that any of you read it. Um, and I posed a series of questions, and I'm not requesting that you answer me on those questions, but what struck me, um, first let me preface my comments by saying that I'm not opposed to the ice arena. My daughter was on the girls' ice hockey team back when it was a club, and we recognize that it takes long hours and a lot of dedication to drive the kids around a racing arena. It's a great idea, especially if it's funded by the private group itself. What does concern me, however, is the what appears to be a lack of planning and consideration of, of the entire opportunity for a site if it is to be located on town property at all. <coughs> um, consideration of what might be a better use for that particular site. Um, I saw a one page report that said we met, we considered four sites. We met to determine the best location, we considered four sites. That's a large piece of property that we have outlined. Here. Why only four sites? Why those four sites, two of which were adjacent to each other earlier, and one site. Um, it may end up being the best site on the campus. It may end up that the campus is the best place for it and not by the park. But I don't know enough to even to say where it should or should not be located. But I do think that the town council needs to very carefully look out for the interests of the community and make sure that you are not precluding other potential uses in the future for other town needs. Um, that you're not costing the town additional money or whatever those things might be. Um, and one, one example is, I may have missed, and I may have been reading it correctly or whatever, there's a comment about the ice arena uh, is poor location because the traffic needs to be routed. The entire traffic is going to be That may be. But does that mean that you should give a preferable site to or, or lease? I'm not even commenting on that aspect of this transaction. So we should give a, a site that may cost less money to fix up or to use to an outside group and preserve property on the campus that the town may subsequently have to be 
design a capital around the face of the So really my request is just that you very carefully consider the implications of the new response. And again, I'm not opposed to an ice cream And are there, <clears throat> are there any other comments on this item? Yes. Name, address, and three minutes. Yeah, my name is Chloe Arkson. I was down here. I think what I would really like to, like to stress is that um, I think it's pretty clear that we need to find a way to, in, to more involve the public get the public to input on um, their ideas and suggestions about this range. Um, a, a lot of things that, that the town decides we're going to do about purchasing various pieces of land, about renovating buildings, about all, all these types of decisions. And I guess I wish there was a way that we could um, get our town more involved, whether that's to have people stand in front of Hannaford and Shaw's in the library on Saturday. And, and literally survey them, ask them, what is your opinion of this? What do you think about this? Or maybe have a call in number. Put a little work in the paper, yes or no. Call this number for yes, you want to hear this number for no. I mean, there are some pretty simple ways to to uh, get some input from the town. I, I, I do think it needs to happen because I think a lot of times, as I've said in the past many times, People read these articles, they glaze over them in the newspaper, and it's a bunch of political jargon to them. They, they just get turned off. Uh, they see, oh, these various sites. But if, as I said before in my earlier comments, if you said we're thinking of tearing down the basketball court, the tennis court, well, that's language people understand. But contemplating various sites, that's the language that turns people off. They don't want to contemplate. They want to hear it now. They want to know the simplest terms. <coughs> What's happening in our town? And I really think that the the politics of the town, they make it so that nobody wants to participate. They use jargon that people don't understand, and you turn off the public. And then, and then in the end, you guys make the decision, and then all we can do is moan about it. So I just... I really implore you to try to find a way to pull the public into these decisions. Thank you. Thank you. And anybody else wish to speak on this item? <coughs> oh, the mic's not working. Um, yeah, probably we have an issue with it. We have an issue with the mic <laughs> issue. So. Oh, the mic now? <laughs> 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 Does anybody else wish to speak on this <coughs> item? All right, seeing none, I'm going to close the public comment section. And before we um, jump to the next thing, um, and I'm not sure if that's... N Nancy, you had wanted to speak on behalf of the library, so <coughs> that, that took care of that. Okay. Um, all right, so do we have a motion? Um, actually, Council Holbrook, um, I'd actually like to uh, provide uh, notice to the board for a decision. Um, I think it's important that I provide notice that there may be an appearance of a conflict of interest because I am employed by mm -hmm. Primary Residential Mortgage Incorporated, which is a mortgage company here in town, in which I work for Mr. Mark Maroon, who is uh, the owner of that business. And so um, understanding what the conflict of interest law reads, which basically states that there needs to be some type of pecuniary or monetary value in my participation, which has, does have a threshold, 
Um, there isn't any, but I think that it needs to be disclosed, and you guys should discuss whether I participate in the conversation and then the vote for everyone's comfort. So, with that being said, um, does somebody want to make a motion to abstain on from these discussions? Going, going, going. All right, fails for lack of a motion, so um, it's been decided that you have the ability and the right to participate in these conversations. Darn. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, back to the main, main thing, which is, do we have a motion? So moved. Okay, so first, do we have a second? Second. Second by um, St. Clair and discussion. Oh. So, um, I'm kind of catching up on the learning curve with this issue outside of what was successful as a citizen and then even as a candidate. I was wondering if, uh, through the manager, um, Given the work that the council has done in the past, to what extent is there legal obligation to continue forward? Um, can the council change its mind if there is a consensus or a decision of the board? W where do I sit in this uh, ball game in this? Well, uh, actions to date, uh, the council has entered into a memorandum of understanding with <coughs> the Friends of Scarborough Hockey, uh, among other things. Um, Forgive me, I'm just trying to find the, the uh, specific language in the memorandum. Uh, so the, through the chair, if I can add while you're looking to So does a memorandum of understanding in this environment require us legally to continue forward? I mean, what is a memorandum of understanding in this environment? No, uh, uh, by definition and by, yeah. by the instrument itself, it is legally non-binding. It's simply a, uh, a declaration, a recitation of some basic understandings and lays out uh, going f uh, going forward as to mutual expectations and responsibilities, but it's not a legal binding document whatsoever. Uh, and if I, I beg your pardon, I can't put my eyes directly on it, but no, I know there's specific good, language. Sufficient explanation. There's sufficient language beyond that yep. to make it absolutely clear that the council uh, continues to hold the, the, the sole right to say no going forward as more details emerge. Yep. Um, and not to have a so, through the t with the chair's input, um, did the prior council vote on that memorandum of understanding unanimously? Was it a split vote? I don't recall what it was. As I recall, it was unanimous. But was it I, unanimous? I, I could stand corrected. Okay. It was unanimous. Mm -hmm. It was unanimous for them to move forward with right. it, for them to come back and present to us. It wasn't us <coughs> giving the green light to anything. Mm -hmm. So I dropped the ball a little bit. I meant to do something. So if you'll bear with me for a minute. I am new. <laughs> um, as Tom so eloquently already pointed out, what, what we are talking about is the Memorandum of Understanding, which is not a legal binding document. It just means that you have agreed to pursue some kind of level of interest and that you're willing to come to the table and talk about it. Um, we've had MO, M memorandums of understanding with other projects. We had one recently, um, which fingers crossed goes well, Habitat for Community has a project. And again, it, it's just that you agree to enter into discussion. So that's the nature of a memorandum of understanding. As a factor of our memorandum of understanding, we agreed that we would have a determination of a site. That was part of the agreement. So at a later date, we would choose a site to our liking, disliking, whatever, um, to at least give them a direction of then what to pursue because each site in each location would have its own set of challenges and financial issues. Um, again, this is a FOSH funded project, just for everyone to remember. This is not a town funded project. Um, so it's an important thing for them to know which location they are on because, like I said, each thing will have a different set of challenges financially. And I. What? No, he was just giving reference to the <laughs> Oh, no contract. He's pointing to this. Yeah. Um, so that's the background, that's the history, just so everybody's a little up to speed about what the uh, what a memorandum of understanding is and how it functions. Uh, now I do want to take just a moment, which I, again, sorry, I dropped oh. the ball. So, 
Uh, I did attend the first FOSH meet, uh, first working group meeting um, to, for site selection. Um, unfortunately, I was not able to attend the second meeting, but Councillor Donovan was um, was wonderful enough to, to step in and, and fill in that role, which was um, a great thing where he has such a great, great legal background. Um, I'm happy to talk about the first meeting, and then I will hand it over to Phil to talk about what the second meeting was. In the first meeting, we had the four sites in front of us. There, there, there's a pretty good reason why we had already started with four sites, which was we have Memorial Park, where clearly we're not going to build a giant building in the middle of Memorial Park. We have the upper end of Memorial, which is what we have set aside and reserved for the someday safety building, which was supposed to be 2016, and obviously that's not happening, but there is a someday that we know that that will be there. We knew that the water tower was not an appropriate site, and we also knew that there's significant wetlands on the back portions of the properties um, on that back side of, uh, if I could point. All these nice little dots you see back here, those, as we know through the Wentworth process, are what EEP considers significant wetland, and it is unlikely that they will ever receive a permit to do any form of construction. So that leaves us with four potential sites. At that time, that was the end of my meeting as to how we came to four sites. So uh, at this point, I'll go ahead. Then the next meeting was the pros and cons of each location. Uh, I attended the second meeting, and uh, just to give you a little bit of the, the background, uh, once we had agreed that we had a memorandum of understanding, uh, what we essentially were saying, we're not, we're not committed to this, but we need to allow the Friends of Scarborough Hockey, Bosch, to uh, uh, fundraise because it's a moot question whether this happens unless they can raise the five plus million dollars. Uh, and having a site uh, on the campus was integral to that task uh, of fundraising. And so while we reached a memorandum of understanding with uh, the FOSH people, and it was unanimously agreed to at the last meeting, we had not gone to the next step of determining where it would be located on the campus, merely that it would be located on the campus. Uh, uh, at the, uh, so what we had for a committee, and I stepped in uh, when uh, Chair Councillor Holbrook could not make the second meeting, uh, <coughs> was a a meeting chaired by the Director of Community Services, Bruce Gulliver. Uh, uh, we had the managers of uh, facilities management for both the school and the town participate. The high school athletic director participated. A school board member participated. The town librarian participated. And Bill Bray, who is an outside engineering, traffic engineering consultant, uh, participated. So we had a group of people who had a great deal of knowledge about the site. Uh, uh, as uh, Chair Holbrook said, the uh, Memorial Park area was pretty well excluded because while we were considering the entirety of the municipal campus, there were portions that were clearly uh, not going to be appropriate, and uh, Memorial Park being the most obvious one. It has been laid out and designed in a manner that uses that space very nicely and to the extent that the periphery uh, remains undeveloped, it has for a long time been identified as the likely location of a uh, 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 public safety building in the future, uh, which will become necessary. So we looked at all the rest of <coughs> the uh, site uh, and uh, uh, and we, and we graded them. We were basing it uh, on several factors, and I'll just recite them so you'll have a sense of, of what we were considering to be important. Uh, other uses in the future uh, was uh, very important. I mentioned the public safety building. <clears throat> the community and senior center concept has been around for a long time. Uh, and it was felt that uh, we should take account of the fact that 
at some point in the future, there is a reasonable chance that this town, as it grows, will support a community and senior center. Uh, expansion of our schools was also perceived as something that needed to be protected. Uh, we looked at traffic, parking, and pedestrian safety as significant factors that were influencing our collective judgment about which of these sites would be most appropriate. Uh, the uh, impact <coughs> that a structure of this size would have on other municipal facilities and where it would be situated in the neighborhood, uh, taking into account uh, both the municipal campus <coughs> and the residential neighborhoods that extended beyond uh, was also taken into account. And of course, last but definitely not least, the environmental impact that the site would have. <coughs> so we looked, we looked at all of those <coughs> uh, and uh, essentially there were four sites that, uh, was, uh, that were left to uh, be evaluated under these criteria uh, after we eliminated the Memorial Park area and the public safety building area along Route 1. The uh, water tower uh, uh, site is that which is located uh, right next to the high school. And this is the water chair tower site that the town has recently acquired. Uh, uh, this was initially proposed by Bosch. Uh, it had vis visibility. It was on uh, uh, Route 114. Uh, as it turned out, as the analysis went on, it was clear that this was the least favored site by everybody. This was a, a virtually a unanimous viewpoint that for all the kind of obvious reasons, and this is one where where do you start? Uh, uh, the site would be crammed in to uh, this space. It creates real difficulty in terms of uh, a uh, traffic movement. Uh, it uh, would preclude ever expanding the high school into this area. Uh, and the high school is severely restricted in many and going in most other, uh, most other directions. So when you added up, yes, there might be some value. When you looked at the negatives, it was exceedingly negative uh, to consider that site. Uh, the, the next area was the outdoor skating rink uh, and maintenance shed uh, location, which is located over no, that one. Here. Uh, this site uh, uh, had several things that were problematic with it. And it was the second least favorite site, again, by a mile, uh, when, when the committee uh, tried to uh, uh, put a favorite, second favorite, third favorite, least favorite. This one uh, finished a distant third. Uh, and the reasons. And I think the, the, the factors that we were most influenced by uh, were that uh, because of the design of the uh, uh, new uh, uh, elementary school, we have a certain traffic pattern there. Uh, and as a consequence, uh, this is a little bit of a crossroads place on the municipal campus. And it's not likely to change unless you want to make a dramatic change in things. And one of the things that we were trying not to do was to propose something that uh, necessitated a dramatic change. Uh, and you can see this. And we heard, I think, very eloquently from Bill Bray, uh, the traffic engineer, and from Mike Legage, the high school athletic director, who's in charge of public safety to a great degree in event management. Uh, and there's a lot of events that are going on in, in this field field area of the high school. And, uh, and, and both said, this was not a good, uh, uh, a good spot. You obviously, you had other factors at work also. Uh, uh, there are some very significant wetlands here because obviously over time, the municipal campus and Route 1 have been developed to a very great extent. And the water has to go somewhere. Uh, and we heard from Greenview uh, Drive uh, that it flows downhill. Uh, and I'm very sympathetic to this gentleman's uh, plea that we do something, and the library's plea, 
that, that whatever happens here be done well, uh, because I, I think it's uh, uh, really inappropriate to have the people who are furthest downhill be the ones who are the recipients of, of wet conditions. Uh, these are very valuable wetlands, and this was pointed out by the facilities manager uh, uh, in the course of it. Uh, and so trying to find parking for this site was going to be a real problem. Uh, uh, this parking over here, uh, which is the Wentworth parking, overbuilt intentionally so as to be able to provide uh, parking for events at our all-weather field here. Uh, uh, would require some pedestrian and vehicular movements that were going to be uh, problematic. So, so this site, uh, and there's some neighborhoods in this area here which have also expressed concern about uh, 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 encroachment towards them. Uh, so, uh, so there were a whole series of reasons why that uh, really fell uh, <coughs> far below the line. The uh, third site was the tennis courts, right here. Uh, the tennis courts uh, is a terrific site. The problem is, it's such a terrific site, we really want to be able to save it for a uh, community center, uh, for a community center, senior center, uh, 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 in the years ahead. Uh, and not necessarily uh, use it up. Uh, it also has a uh, athletic program, uh, a tennis uh, tennis program going on, and and uh, would represent a problem in terms of, uh, of being able to continue to maintain that program. Uh, we have to be finding a new place uh, for that to take place. So uh, that between the disruption to the present use uh, being problematic and uh, uh, the town having its eye uh, and wanting to reserve that space for uh, a potential community or senior center in the future, that really was uh, uh, a close. It was, uh, it was deemed a very good site, but probably not the one we wanted to go with. The basketball site, and we had originally been thinking that the uh, configuration of a uh, skating rink, large structure, uh, would be laid out uh, facing the library. Well, uh, uh, Nancy Kroll came to the uh, meeting, pointed out that it would be very helpful to not necessarily have the hockey rink create problems as a neighbor for the library. Uh, and uh, we were also told that the uh, ability to uh, have a traffic pattern that worked would be uh, improved if rather than having the site uh, face the library, uh, that it faced the uh, new elementary school. I, I just wanted to point out um, at the bottom of this slide is Gorham Road in the library, Quentin Drive. Just appreciate on this one, Gorham Road runs up the side. So I apologize for the different orientation, but. Um, so what you have is you're seeing the library parking lot here, and the library would be right in this <coughs> space right here. Uh, this shows the building turned uh, uh, and facing uh, Wentworth School and the Wentworth parking lot. Uh, the traffic pattern would come in, would uh, have drop off for buses because a lot of the uh, students who would use this would be bused uh, uh, and uh, go out and uh, back out onto Gorham Road. Uh, uh, parking uh, would be available partly on the immediate site uh, and partly uh, for larger groups, weekends and whatnot, when games are being played or evenings uh, uh, in the Wentworth parking. Uh, so, as you can see, this is the footprint of the building uh, with the basketball courts being located here. The, uh, 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 over here are the tennis courts. So this is, this is what came out of our meeting and, uh, and was re is being recommended to the government. Thank you, Bill. Uh, do just note that it is fairly um, 
preliminary to say that's exactly how the building would sit. You know, there's still obviously DEP, there's oh, planning right. board approvals, there's an agreement to actually agree to. If there's an if here, there, there's still a big if. I, I, I do do want to put that out there. Um, so um, I hope that helps. You know, just to help people, folks understand. You know, why each each site has its own challenges. This is the reason why. Um, if we are to move forward with some kind of a project, this is the likely place to move forward with. Uh, we did have a first and a second on this, so um, like I said I did a little backwards, my apologies. So, and is there any discussion at this point or questions? Ed? Um. Why aren't we looking at other land that the town owns and get it off the campus? To me, we're taking a look at four spots, and every single spot has got its downside and serious downside. Isn't there other land that we have around that we can, that's relatively close? I know it doesn't eliminate the busing issue, but that, this isn't about busing kids to hockey practice and stuff like that. I. And if, if the question is if we could go, I, I don't know, I'm assuming you're asking a question. Um, that would probably, you know, the memorandum of understanding is for a site on the municipal campus. Um, certainly, that's a pretty good answer in itself that you well, wouldn't support doing an ice rink on the municipal campus. <laughs> um, at the time, at this time, the, the way it's being explored is for the municipal campus. Um, and so the question in front of you is, this is what the working group's committee of a suggestion as far as the best possible location within this municipal campus to put the building. Um, so All it, I'm saying is maybe we should take a step back and reconsider that. So certainly, we don't have to we could all vote no, and it's defeated, and you know that that's certainly a possibility too. Um, but again, like I said, the, the item in front of us, which has a first and a second, um, is a recommendation of this proposed location for an ice uh, ice arena. Um, a couple of questions. I'm not quite sure how to frame it for conversations, but at least a little bit of reading that I did in the Scarborough Leader suggested, if there are wetlands issues. Um, there may be some cost to deal with those, whatever that is. And the number that was in the paper was a cost of about $500,000. How does, and then if we have to re relocate or move the basketball courts or tennis courts, how does that get factored into this? Is this? Does that become a cost to the town? That's sort of the first question. The second question is, did this group, you know, and, and Mr. Arnold, you were talking, but for instance, we wanted to preserve the tennis court area for a community center. But if we do all of this work, for this location, for the ice ring, does that impact the ability to use that land because of wetlands? I mean, we've we done studies to show if this footprint goes here, does it impact our ability to use some of those other sites and in the ways that we may want to do? And the third thing I have a question for, which I think was a great question, people have asked, do we have a master plan for the campus? And I don't know the answer to that, so if, if, if we do, what are other things we're doing? Is this the highest and best use? So those are sort of three, because I'm new to the process, those are kind of three things that kind of swirl. Tom, can you answer those first two questions, please? Uh, first question had to do with wetlands. Is that okay, if, 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 it, if, if it costs us, if it costs five hundred thousand dollars to deal with the wetlands, whose whose pocket is that? That that. It's been my understanding, okay. though it's not been articulated in you know in final detail. But uh, all costs are borne by them. That they're uh, to the extent that municipal facilities need to be relo relocated or impacted, uh, wetland impact is a project cost, and it is their cost. Uh, that's been my understanding right along. Those details need to be hardened up as, if this goes forward. Again, I think it's important just to point: we're still at the juncture. They're at the at the very edge of a very massive fundraising campaign, and this may not come to fruition for lack of funding. And this is all about giving them the ability to uh, tell the story to major, likely corporate donors, I suspect. Um, uh, there need to be some level of specificity as to where, go, where it's going to go and what it's going to look like. 
so your answer, your questions are, are very good, um, um, and they need to be defined. But it's been my impression right along that these are 100% costs to the private group. Okay. In terms of the master plan, uh, they're essentially FOSH is forcing our hand, and that in fact uh, they're in front of us before we would be able to complete that project. But I, I do have intentions in our in the preliminary stages of doing exactly that to understand what uh, what are the universe of projects that are kind of out there and uh, whether that process even, uh, includes uh, putting things on the face of the earth that might be premature, but at least we need to define what all those um, long-range facility planning needs are. And so that's a process that I've begun. They happen to be in front of us uh, in advance of that. Yeah, but I, and I guess the third question was just, and if we had articulated that the tennis court was a prime area for, you know, a senior center or whatever we decide, if that's the area we're holding, do we know that if we put this structure where they're suggesting it, that it's not going to impact our ability to use that prime spot that we're trying to reserve? Because, again, I, as I hear it, I, it sounds like there's a lot of wetlands issues, drainage issues, mm -hmm. water issues, certainly the gentleman that shared his issues. So I just want to be sure that we're not, by going first, that we're then not really restricting what we're able to do once we have the master plan. I can't answer that definitively. What, what I can say uh, as a non-professional in this field, but it, uh, based on the wetland mapping that's on this map behind us, the majority of the property, the tennis court property, is outside of wetland areas. So I think permitting, uh, it would only stand a reason, permitting should be much easier on that site. And from a traffic point of view, uh, I think there's the potential for better servicing that site or equally as good. Um, so uh, in my mind, uh, that is a, uh, a preferable site. Whatever future use that might be is yet to be determined. But of the two, I think we ought to reserve that, oh, put that in our back pocket. All right. And Bill. Uh, last to, just to, to the last point that, that Peter was raising, uh, the uh, FOSH people did question whether the availability of the tennis court site because the engineers, uh, Lee Allen uh, uh, and uh, uh, ooh, the other gentleman's name is escaping me. Rick Lazell. Rick Lazell. Uh, they said that that's already kind of been proven to be able to, it's high and dry for the most part. So the ability to build on that is easier. And obviously, there's a desirability on anybody's part who comes along right. to be able to take the best site, the one that's the most easily developed. And, and so uh, my sense is that there are not going to be the permitting issues for that site that might exist. And the permit issues are pretty much you have to pay to r remove a wetland because it has to be replaced mm -hmm. somewhere else. And the state has formulas as to what that costs, and that cost can be expensive. And that's all part of the project cost that would have to be borne by FOSH. It, it may well be a very wise position for the town to take, and we've had initial conversations to require the entire site to be permitted, to understand and explore that up front so we all know before we sign on the dotted line what the, what the impact is. And it may be, as a practical matter, the regulatory agencies require us to do that because it, it's all interrelated. Um, it, it would be my expectation that probably that would happen as a function of the yeah. regulatory agencies anyway. And, and, and I did want to just respond just to Ed's uh, comment because I think it's, it's worth talking about just a little bit. Uh, we did talk about when we had the MOU before us whether this is going to be on the campus or off the campus. And we all voted that it would be in the MOU as on the campus. And I think, at least from my own perspective, this is a community, it's true, it's private funds, but it's a pri private public partnership. It's our land. It's going to be a community facility uh, and perceived as a community facility. And much like the public library is not owned by the town, but it's on town land and leased for 100 years, uh, whatever it is. But, and run by a very capable board of trustees. I expect that the FOSH people certainly appear to me to be at the same level of competency as our library and would be respectful of uh, the town's needs 
and the final agreement, if it ever were to come to pass, would be ironclad in that regard in terms of protecting our rights. David, I think you were next. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, one comment, I, I noticed that Mr. Bray was involved, uh, was a highly distinguished uh, state planner regarding traffic. I was just wondering if you could share the comments uh, that he might have uh, given or his advice around the traffic, particularly on Gorham Road, because uh, uh, in an environment in which we just uh, um, uh, built a traffic calming device in the middle of it, it seems that adding more traffic to Gorham Road is a little contradictory to where we moved and wanted to understand that better. Anybody that would I, I was not at those meetings. I can't speak to Mr. Bray's comments, but as regards the traffic calming, it really serves two purposes. You're talking about the improvements on Gorham Road at the end of Wentworth Drive, close to Hannaford Drive. Yes. First and foremost, it was for, for pedestrian safety, okay. uh, but it was also to control traffic flow uh, onto and uh, in and out of the municipal campus. And um, I don't believe that has any uh, effect at limiting volume of traffic on um, on Gorham Road itself, um, but it certainly does affect how vehicles come and go from this campus, yes. Because there's only, th if I understand the traffic pattern, there's only three uh, egresses or ingresses. One is Gorham Road, the other one is Route 1, where Town Hall is, and the third one is Sawyer Road, correct? That's well, and right. Quentin Drive at the library. Well, there's, yeah, there's, there's four. There's four. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't have to, um, okay. There's a back way to get. Yeah, well, actually, that is the only one on, on the Gorm Road, is yes, it? Yes. That's what I was talking about. That's the that one is the Gorm Road. Right. That's oh, one. yeah. Right. 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 Was the light? That's, that's, there's only I'm one entrance to. Okay. So I was, I was just wondering what Mr. Bray's uh, um, advice was regarding. Uh, I mean, how heavy is the impact? Is there going to be major modifications to the Gorm Road to sustain um, this type of uh, new facility? Because the fact is that there is going to be a. We might be bus not having to bus the children there, but there's going to be a lot of parents coming to pick their kids up. Yes. And that increases traffic, period. It doesn't matter whether you're at the top of the hill near Route 1 or whether you're down there near the library. It just is, it does increase traffic. So could you answer me, Richard? Would not their planning board approval process, if we came to that point, okay. require all of those yeah. traffic? Yeah. And, and just in fairness to Mr. Bray, uh, he had not done a traffic study. Yeah. And so he, 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 uh, he wasn't about to opine without having done the professional work. What he did say, however, was that uh, this was the best site from a traffic point of view amongst all of the sites that were options. And he did not say, but it's a bad site. Uh, uh, and he did favor turning the building in a manner that the traffic would come in uh, 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 what I think is Wentworth Drive, is it called now? It's yeah. actually Quentin Drive. Quentin Drive, uh, and then turning uh, and, and entering uh, the facility parallel to the parking lot. He said that was a superior approach to anything that he had otherwise seen presented. Uh, but I think the, the, from his point of view, the bottom line would be the planning board analysis is what's going to determine whether or not uh, exactly how it, yeah, how it works out. Yeah. Um, was there any other discussion or questions I at this point? I, I did. did. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You go. go. <laughs> sure. uh, I, I just, um, and I'm going to direct this to the town manager through the chair. Um, the gentleman who spoke on Green Needle Drive, I've I've shown properties on Green Needle, and I know that all those properties on that side of the back are wet. Um, is it, and part of it has to do with the geography of the place, but are we, have we done studies, or what's, you know, where are we with that? Uh, I know during my tenure we have uh, had engineers go out and study the area. Mike Shaw, uh, I'm sure, has been in touch with Mr. Nickerson and his neighbors through the years. Uh, but you really alluded to, to the fact that it is uh, low to begin with, and right. it is dead flat through there. And so moving water is very difficult. If anyone's traveled Gorham Road in the last two months, we've done ditch work along that. Yeah. looks like there's canals on either side. Uh, that water does not move very quick, if at all, through that area, and that's chronically a problem. And again, uh, my assumption is that uh, in a planning border, um, they would be looking at that type of an impact uh, on neighboring, you know, potential impacts with engineering studies and whatever. 
it's quite possible that there is a large retention facility that's constructed okay. approximate to this facility or uh, along Gorm Road to take care of some of those okay. situations. Is that Jimmy? Yep. Thanks. Can't see Um I no, I think that kind of, that might have actually I was concerned about the Greenwood Drive issue and the library issue a little bit. Um the land but I think you guys answered that pretty well, that it will be looked at and studied and um I don't I can't speak for everybody else, but I can speak for myself and say that I'm not going to let something happen that's going to um, ruin your neighborhood any more than it's already been ruined. So, I mean, that's the most that I that I can do. I think it's important to say I think you're owed that. I can tell that you're. <coughs> this has not been an easy battle for you and. Um, I'm sure your neighbors probably all feel the same way. And um, my um, house and the neighbor, people that live across from my house, flood also. And it can be devastating. You can lose a lot of stuff. And um, I do want to say that I have don't know all the FOSH people personally. I've done a lot of reading on them um, and their board. And I do have a lot of faith in them that they are going to do the right thing by us and by this town and by the children of our town. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that you knew that at least, and I, and I do I do know my fellow counselors, and this is a different council. So, you know, work work with us, and, w and we'll work with you. I promise you that. Okay. Anybody else? Um, so uh, it's kind of a dilemma because I, uh, I'm in a kind of dilemma because I do believe that when you have a committee of uh, capable people making decisions that you should have a lot of trust in that uh, to the extent until you have to make a final decision. So, um, but I also think that if I didn't share my reservations today that it would be a bigger heel by then surprising everyone at the end that um, I might disagree with this and I'll be honest um, and I have shared this with others. I, the premise of this idea, I think, is absolutely incredible. I think it's one of the best ideas that's come forward regarding the partnership with special, not special interest groups, but groups that have um, an interest in something that can benefit the town as a whole. So I do agree with this. I don't agree with the site. And I think that there should be stronger consideration given to the site that's the ice rink um, and that the land and the wetlands could be mitigated and that the traffic pattern could be realigned so that it is beneficial <coughs> and you move it away. Because I can tell you for eight years that I sat on this council before, um, the people of Green Needle Drive and Sawyer Road have been fighting with every growth expansion that we've ever had. Um, I mean, it took me eight years to fight um, in order to get rid of the tower so that we can then negotiate so that we could put in public sewer and pu or at least access to public sewer and public water down Sawyer Road because they had the lead content was absolutely mm. incredible. You know, and so we don't, I don't think that we do give proper due uh, consideration to the neighbors, um, especially after we just got done having a workshop in which we were talking about due consideration for the neighbors regarding a land transaction. Um, the other thing is, and, and I'll be honest, is that, you know, I don't want to reopen the can of worms, but I'm not, I don't know if I agree with the legal structure of the relationship in the first place. Um, I wonder whether or not it's actually better for the town to be the owner of the property and the owner of the building and then enter into a lease agreement with uh, FOSH in which their $5 million investment becomes a leasehold um, so that we own and control it no differently than how the Cumberland County Civic Center is run. Um, they too, uh, you know, the city of Portland owns the property, Cumberland County owns the building and then there's a port authority that actually runs it. So I question whether or not we've actually looked at a better legal structure that protects the town as a whole. I also think that in that, um, it would require us to go out to bond, which would require us to um, get the public's opinion. Because uh, the fact is, is that if we're going to allow this type of relationship with this organization, why not other organizations? Why not, why not swimming? Why not a pool? Why not whatever, indoor track, whatever the groups might be, I don't think that it's, um, I, I think there needs to be autonomy in the relationship and there needs to be a legal structure that protects the town as a whole. I'm not saying I don't want this. I'm not saying I don't like the idea. I'm just saying that personally, I think that there um, needs to be reconsideration about the legal structure 
and I'm 100% behind not having it at this particular location. Anybody else? Well, bringing up the rear. <laughs> so, um, you have to give me a second to put my head back on. Um, I do want to piggyback on something that Babine said. Um, I, I think kind of out of the gate, I was a fairly strong advocate of a no. <laughs> um, and it was a no when the idea was pitched to me. And, you know, then I tried to remember my own council goal, which was to remain open minded about something and be open to the concepts of what, what is the potential, okay? If I don't like it, be open-minded enough to say, how can I make it that I like it? <laughs> so I, I guess that, that's my first thing I would like to say, is I, I'm trying to remain open-minded about it. I also want to say that at this point for me, this is such a preliminary stage. It is only in a memorandum of understanding. It is not that we have signed the agreement. I like some of your concepts, Sean, about maybe maybe how we do the lease. Yeah. You know, but again, these are all later down the road issues. This is a very preliminary on the upfront. Do we even want to explore it? Um, all those details for me can get ironed out. I will say, as a counselor, at, for the tonight, I'm willing to support it with a yes vote from myself for tonight to explore it. However, my long-term vote are the same issues that I've said right along. What I am looking for as a counselor is, and again, I appreciate there are some folks that have had horrible experiences with prior councils. Um, <coughs> I am Dave Green's daughter. I have heard all kinds of <laughs> wonderful names about certain counselors and previous, <laughs> previously stated. Um, I can tell you that this counselor is not going to give a vote if the water issues are not addressed, right. however that might be. If that's through the planning board process if that, that you're aware of, that exactly. It's not going to get a vote for me if I have swimming pools out behind it. It's not going to happen. Um, I'm not likely to support it if you ask us for a dime. <laughs> I'm not going to support it. I'm not going to support it if there is not a multi-purpose to this building. Mm -hmm. It can be an ice rink in its main function, absolutely, but it needs to be more. It needs to be greater. There has to be a service to the rest of the community. Mm -hmm. I I've been very clear about those standards. They have not changed. Again, I would just like to reiterate that for me, at this point, I'm willing to pursue the conversation. The other reason I'm willing to support this as a site location is, and I'm going to touch base very briefly, <laughs> the ice rink that is on the outdoor ice rink would be gone. That is why I do not favor that site. Not only will the ice rink for the outdoor ice rink be gone, but the maintenance shed would need to be relocated. I'm not interested in doing those things at this time. The other site, as though it's higher and drier and it's a little nicer, which is the lower tennis court location, is the most likely spot that we're going to move that basketball court to. And it would be a tennis court, a tennis court, and a basketball court. Again, not an expense that I expect this community to pay for. It will need to be moved it will need to be rectified, and it will need to be placed somewhere else. And again, that is an expectation I personally have. <clears throat> but again, these are long-term issues. That is not the here and the now, which is, do we want to move forward with pursuing this site location in an MOU? So those are my comments. Those are my two cents. Everybody's had an opportunity at this point. So at this point in time, I'm going to ask, ask because we have had a first and a second, um, at this time, all those in favor and all those opposed, there's two, uh, Babine and uh, Boyce. All right, moving on, non-action items. There are none. So moving into um, item number nine, sorry, last number eight. Standing and Special Committee report, and we will go ahead and... Um, there's not going to be a lot of those yet, so <laughs> we just assigned a lot of those. But um, we'll go ahead and, and start um, down with you with Peter if there's anything that you Peter. had your... Not Peter. I didn't think... Okay. I didn't think. Um, go go oh. ahead, Ed. Ed. Nothing. All right. Um, I just 
My turn? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm going to be meeting with Tom tomorrow um, to start talking about the Ordinance Committee and um, how we're going to move forward with that, uh, when our meetings are going to be, how we're going to meet the community needs. Um, I have some ideas for some format changes for how the Ordinance Committee is going to go. Um, so I'm actually uh, energized and excited to get going on that. We have a long list of, of things that need to get accomplished, so it's going to be really important that we start meeting really quickly. Um, and I have a feeling that our meetings won't, uh, will take longer than 25 minutes. Um, the other thing I wanted to do is I see that I'm back on the library. <laughs> Yay! Um, uh, and I'm hopefully going to be able to start working with you guys a little bit better than in the past. I guess I wanted to say that, let you guys publicly know that um, it's been difficult because of the schedule and when your um, meetings fall and when our council meetings fall. Um, and at the time, I was also on the school board liaison, so I don't have that commitment anymore. So hopefully, we'll be able to work a little bit better and a little bit closer together. So thank you for your patience over the last two years. It's very appreciated. And that's it for me. And Councillor Katarina. Of course. Um, long range planning, PACs, whatever. There's a meeting tomorrow night. All of my neighbors up in North Scarborough, I hope to see you there, at the Grange at 6 o'clock. And they're going to be talking about future traffic patterns, what's going to happen, because we know that 114 and 22 are a mess. Uh, and they're. I'm going to be blunt about it. They've been talking this way now. I, I moved to 114, what, 20, almost 30 years ago now. And they've been talking. They haven't done anything yet. But anyway, there's a meeting at 6 o'clock tomorrow night at the Scarborough, North Scarborough Grange. And I hope that everyone who's listening on TV of my neighbors shows up because we want to hear what you think. That's it. Bill? Uh, there is something, uh, the acronym is PACTS, P-A-C-T-S, and it stands for Portland Area Comprehensive Transportation, Transportation System. Uh, and That's Jean Marie and I have gone to <laughs> a number of these meetings, and as some people have referred to it, it's like watching paint dry. Uh, <laughs> uh, um. But I, I did attend a regional transportation conference at Old Orchard Beach Town Hall with Dan Bacon and Judy Roy uh, this past week. Uh, it uh, was a what they call a sub-region uh, uh, meeting. And our sub this is obviously the transportation planning for the greater Portland area, and our sub-region is Scarborough, Old Orchard Beach, mm -hmm. Saco, Bitterford, and Arundel. And the purpose was to identify what were the highest regional priorities. Uh, uh, Dan Bacon did a very good job representing the town there. Uh, he knew everyone there. Where they were all, you know, town planners uh, for the most part. Uh, and he presented that our greatest uh, need is to have uh, another exit off I-95 between exits 36 and 42 along the Saco Scarborough line, and uh, and thus be able to alleviate traffic on Route 1, which is obviously that corridor for, for these towns is a tremendous burden as far as uh, ca uh, uh, traffic impact. The uh, group as a whole ended up recognizing that that was a high priority, but uh, recommended studying the traffic impact along Route 1 from Pleasant Hill Road in Scarborough all the way down to Arundel. And so that, just so that everyone will know, that's really where this thing is going to go in the months ahead. Uh, and hopefully it, they'll coordinate their efforts with uh, uh, the Department of the State Department of Transportation that uh, controls the interstate highway uh, in an effort to push forward uh, what is Scarborough's greatest priority. And John, I don't know that you have anything yet, but Absolutely. you uh, do. I do. I do. I do. Oh, that's right. For finance committee. Yeah. Um, so as a finance committee, uh, for the liaison report or for the uh, report, a couple of items just to share. 
Um, and I'll go through. Uh, I had a chance uh, to actually meet with um, Chris Ciazzo, who is going to be the um, finance chair for the school board this year. I'm also with Dr. Entwistle and then also with the town manager and had a very productive meeting today to talk about um, how we can begin the, the discussion process regarding our budget, how we can incorporate some feedback that we've already received regarding transparency and openness and, uh, and uh, um, even some public involvement. Um, what I did want to mention is that we did come to some of that I've already uh, talked with the members of our finance committee. I um, would like to provide notice that we would like to have a joint workshop. It is a finance committee workshop, so it's our works. It's our um, finance committee along with the school board's finance committee and the town manager and the superintendent. Um, it is one that, even though it's technically it's a town council uh, meeting or finance committee, um, it's a partnership with the school board in which Mr. Ciazzo and I will co-facilitate. Um, the there are some s several goals with that meeting. First is that we will be opening and allowing uh, public comment and put input at the beginning of the meeting as well as at the end, which is a little uncommon in the past. Um, but I do need um, everyone to kind of understand is that we do have a lot of work to accomplish. And while I don't want to stifle anybody, we do have a short period of time. Everyone has jobs and family to attend to as well as our staff and including the volunteers that uh, serve. Um, there will be comments of introduction by both uh, Chris and I. Um, and, and trying to set the tone about our relationship and the, the, how we want to build upon that. Um, there will be a presentation by the managers uh, of both departments or both groups um, with year-to-date or quarter-to-date financial statements. The purpose of that is really an introduction to what our statements look like, determine whether or not there's any request for modification in the presentation. It's not to do a line item assessment, it's not to do a departmental assessment, it's to give us some familiarity and, and the managers are going to be providing us with that comment. That's about a five minute presentation on both sides. Um, and then there's going to be a budget dialogue and the manager passed out uh, the survey that I'd like to ask each of you to complete. Um, the school board, um, through Chris and, the, and Dr. Antwistle, have already issued the survey to their board. And I thought that it's a very good approach for us to begin that conversation about our relationship. And really, the survey is a three-point survey in which um, the questions that are being asked of the counselors is to what improvements would you like to see made to the budget development process relating to schedule, sequence, meeting types, formats, et cetera? What improvements would you like to see made to the budget planning and goal setting process? And what other town council or school board dialogue topics do you feel are substantive and beneficial to address to provide the best budget for, the, for Scarborough as a whole? Um, our process is going to be is to take um, our responses, anonymous responses from the town council as well as from the school board, marry them, well, first keep them separate, but then marry them together and find the commonalities. And the goal is that um, we will be able to present at, the next, at that first meeting to both committees what those responses are. And the goal is to eventually, as we move through the cycle, is to present it to the full board as part of one of my um, committee reports as well, um, and really make this into a partnership with the school board chair um, and, and the school board's finance chair. So uh, that is our beginning approach. Um, I do want to mention um, that, um, sorry, one of the other things that we're going to hopefully discuss as an outcome from that discussion is really what are our next steps? You know, how do we want to um, develop the budget conversation? How do we want to have um, correlated conversations? And what I mean by correlated is I'm, a, I'm more of a big thinker, um, and I want to make sure everyone's comfortable with that approach because I'm, I'm looking at what are the cost drivers. Um, I think that it's been an arduous and sometimes embarrassing process to literally go line item by line item. And a $28 million budget for the town and what, what 32 35 for the school sit there and talk about a $1,500 budget line is a little bit um, um, troubling in some ways. But I think that it needs to be done. Uh, I've got the fortunate position of having done this before, um, and I know that uh, we have one new counselor, and I don't want to you know, take that um, wonderful experience away from him, but I'm hoping that we can come to an agreement <laughs> to look at the, the bigger picture drivers. Uh, the big piece is that I really th I think there's a consensus in Tom. I, I think you can concur. Coming out of that meeting uh, with Chris, that um, you know, we understand that we all have our roles and responsibilities, and um, we want to be creative in our thought process um, and not uh, stifle that. But at the same time, we need to be able to respect that we all have our decisions that we have to make, and we're you know we're the advocate for our respective groups. The school board's role is to be an advocate for education, and ours is to be an advocate for the entire town. And I do believe, sub you know, subsequently that 
I think the school board would say that they're also advocates for the town as a whole. So um, just hoping everyone keeps an open mind with that process, um, and we'll take feedback as we go through that. Um, and you know, it's nice to know that we're going to have a goal-setting process. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's um, going to be a, some type of monetary conversation about uh, mill rates and uh, tax increases and in value. So. Um, I just want us all, we all have a responsibility to keep an open mind in that process. Just one piece of housekeeping regarding these three questions. I'll send them by email. So if it's easiest for you to simply respond to that, it will be a fillable form. Yeah. Shoot them back to me. <coughs> if you could do that by no later than noon on Monday, just so we can collate those responses and have them available for next Wednesday's uh, review. And just a closing, you know, um, um, it's, 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 it's my, go my goal in the end is that I mean, the school board becomes an advocate and a supporter of the entire budget, just as much as we become the supporter and advocate of the school budget. That way it's a, a joint relationship. Um, and so uh, I really think that we can get there with the people that we have at the table. So. All right. And um, next Wednesday, on to the next thing, which will be item number 10, town manager report. Yes. <laughs> I think you stole my thunder, so very quickly. <laughs> can I, can I, sorry. Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gung-ho to go home at this point. Um, you know, oh, did you that. ever report? I did. I did. I forget about me. <laughs> <laughs> we remind you. Yeah, that's all right. Um, I do. I have a couple things to report, so, so bear in mind. Appointments committee met this evening. We have some names to post. Um, Board of Assessment Review which will be Alan Peoples and Chris Herrick as full voting members. We have Mark Colston and David Green for Coastal Water and Harbor Committee, which I did recuse and abstain from, um, and that would be two voting members. Uh, Community Service Recreation and Advisory Board, um, Ivor Carlson as a full voting member, and Leroy Crockett. Conservation Commission, Ivor Carlson, and. Susan Nixon as full voting members. Energy Committee would be J. Anton Bodor as a voting member. And Housing Alliance, Mike Bunting as a full voting member. Parks and Conservation Land Board, Richard Murphy as a full voting member. Personal Appeals Board, Jennifer Beatty. Daniel, Daniel Doyer and Emily Ward as full voting members. Planning Board to move Nicholas McKee to a full voting member. Michael Wood as a full voting member. <coughs> and we have Senior Advisory, Emily Estes as a full voting member. David Green. Shellfish Conservation Committee, Commission. Again, I abstained from this vote, but I posted it as a name for, for your consideration. And we have some others that we need to, to wrap up with, but those are um, it for this evening for posting names for appointments. Um, we will be meeting again, hopefully um, prior, as an appointments committee, prior to our next council meeting, um, a half hour beforehand would be fantastic. Um, so there's that. And then we have historic preservation met yesterday. Um, Ad Adam Chair, do you need an approval for that? Nope, just posting. Oh, okay. It'll be on the next next council meeting. Um, historic preservation met. I did not attend that meeting. I was at um, MMA with with Bill and, and Peter and getting a very interesting um, seminar. That the, the one of the greatest things that I walked away from were two things. Actually, the first one is we're already well ahead of the game and already do 95% of what their recommendations are. Right. And the second thing is as much as we are doing already, which is the communication piece. And, and really, you know, it's not just communication out with the public. It's a whole package that, you know, community, council, committees, and everybody talking together. So, um there was that. And then um, I did get filled in from the chair for, for historic preservation, and um, they are now at a point where they are ready to move forward with um, the first leg of, of their work, which will be the historic structures. So these will be the buildings, their recommended list of structures to the council. 
and what the things are that will entail and what that list allows for. Um, and some of the, again, their directive has always been uh, an incentive-based program. There is more to come later, but um, what those incentives could look like by just having the list itself as well as a small tweak or two to the zoning ordinance. Um, that will be our first meeting in January as a council for a workshop item. Mm -hmm. um, so that's already been well established. We've got workshops ahead of just about every meeting right now. <laughs> Housing Alliance, um, good news. Habitat Project is in front of Planning Board next Monday, I believe that is, December 8th, 7 p.m. Um, fingers crossed that they receive their final approval, in which case that means likely for a spring groundbreaking, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So um, that would be fantastic. Um, Housing Alliance will be meeting Thursday, December 4th at 6.30 p.m. That's their next meeting. Um, I said that wrong. Sorry, that's the wrong date. That was when we... <laughs> that's okay. Uh, Thursday, December 4th for Housing Alliance for their next meeting. They'll be looking at two, two items for discussion. They'll be looking at density bonuses within our current zoning. Um, we, we don't have a lot of zoning that can utilize the affordable bonus, so we're going to spend some time looking through it. We have something crazy like 30 some odd zones in this town, so they were going to start looking at what are the zones we have that allow higher density building and what the affordable application might be in those zones as well. Um, and there's also going to be some discussion around other communities have initiatives for um, delivered affordable homes and, and units. They do have some initiatives and incentives in other communities that have to do with their fee structure. And there's waiver of some fees or partial fees and that sort of thing for the delivered unit. So there'll be some discussion around that. Um, and that's it for my meeting. Okay. All right, now you can go. Right. <laughs> Very quickly, just a reminder, um, the annual tree lighting ceremony is this weekend, Saturday, December 6th. 5 p.m. here at Memorial Park. Uh, there'll be Santa Claus there, and there'll be fireworks uh, promptly at 6.30 as well cool. in the evening. Uh, as Council Chair mentioned, uh, we are planning on doing the annual goal setting 6 p.m. It'll be essentially like we did tonight, you need at 6 before your meeting on the 17th. So hopefully it's not a hardship. It's a night you've already planned out. Just be an hour earlier. I'll be sending out some um, suggested instructions for kind of format, and I'll do my best to facilitate that session for you. And if it's helpful, I'll send out the last three years of goals, just so you have a sense of what past councils <coughs> have looked at. And uh, many of those uh, have been accomplished, but others uh, are ongoing, and you might want to might uh, be food for thought as you think about others. Um, I do want to provide a, a much more thorough response for the future, but long-range planning, uh, facility planning, is something that we've been talking about for a long time, years, if not decades. I look, look to Nancy in the audience. Um, I have made efforts uh, getting some consulting help, really, to help facilitate a process for us. And I'll be working with Council Chair, and we'll be providing some more updates. But certainly the Council will be involved in that process. Uh, we're just at the, at the infancy as we speak. and. Part of the motivation, really, we were reminded um, not only do we have the library and other interests in the community that have, have a long-standing interest in major capital projects of one sort or another, but this ice rink is something that landed on our laps and it really forced us to say, well, we have a limited amount of real estate and resource, let's make sure we use it wisely. And the third piece is that the school is undertaking has undertaken, I should say, a pretty elaborate evaluation of school facilities. And the results of that effort are due to come out in the next couple of months. Mm -hmm. And frankly, I want to make sure that we have at least a conceptual discussion of what our priorities are so the two can be dovetailed um, because these are town-wide priorities. And, and so um, I've committed to really pushing that project through over the next several months. And I'll clue you in as it develops. Thank you. All right, council member comments. We will start on this end of the table. Seema? Thank you. Um, just a couple of items. First is uh, I'll either be, uh, I'm trying to remember my entire schedule, but um, I may not be able to stay at the entire meeting tomorrow uh, for the PACs in the North Scarborough area because the school board is also meeting and as the new liaison, 
I've already spoken actually with the chairwoman of the school board and I'm planning on attending to introduce myself and begin that relationship. So if you can excuse my absence, um, I'll uh, definitely keep an uh, ear open for the information. If you can bring back anything that's shared, it would be wonderful. Um, I did want to um, mention that um, I was wondering if we could get a contact list for everybody, like the school board, sanitary district, email, phone numbers, proper phone numbers, but also for the committees, um, and then what, or not the committees, but the, well, the committees, uh, um, like their schedule, um, and who's on it, basically your sheet, yeah. um, you know, and then uh, the external ones too, because now that I'm on SEDCO and I need to know, I know who to contact for that one, but like EcoMaine is a big one, I need to get in touch with them quickly to get them into my calendar, so if we can get that information in a, some type of catalog would be really, <coughs> really, really nice, if you don't mind. Um, you know, we're entering in a time of giving, and there's a lot of Skyro-based, uh, community-based uh, organizations that give uh, during this season of giving, and I just wanted to mention uh, one of my favorites is the American Legion, and they are a destination point for Toys for Tots, in which you can drop that off, and uh, um, William, um, and I apologize, uh, especially as a Mason, I think it's just, it's, it's William J. King, or William King's, uh, the, the Mason Lodge on Route 1 is also a destination. I couldn't remember the middle initial of of him. Um, so uh, there was great organizations and great um, programs, so uh, think about those. Um, sorry. Um, I wanted to mention regarding the appointments, I wanted to welcome back uh, former council chairman uh, Michael Woods. He's going to be a great addition. I think he actually started out there, and so uh, having him home from overseas and having him back is a wonderful thing for us. I think it's our big win this year. Um, so welcome back, Mike, very much. And then last, I really wanted to address, um, that was a little short for words last time. Um, I just want to thank Scarborough for giving me this chance. I think that if uh, anyone looks at my past in public service, I've been given a couple of chances, um, having had to leave town a couple of times. And so I really appreciate um, that level of confidence, and I guarantee that I'm going to work extremely <coughs> hard with all of you and with the school board uh, for good solutions and outcomes. Um, the fact is, is that in my family, public service has always been a wonderful thing. And since the last time I've been sitting on the council, I actually lost a big influencer in my life. It was my stepfather uh, when he passed. He actually had just gotten elected to his 50th year and as road commissioner of our little town in Bat the outside of Bath. Um, and he ended up leaving because they tried to make him use an iPad. Um, <laughs> and he was used to writing his proposals on napkins at the diner. Um, and he had passed away. so. Um, I, I really enjoy the fact that I get to come back and do this again, and I promise that I am not leaving. And I did want to uh, reach out and say uh, um, the commitment that it takes to do this job is not um, individual. It's definitely a partnership with your life partner, and so I want to thank my wife, Terry, for giving me this opportunity because uh, God knows um, I promised her this time around I was not giving out the house phone. I was only going to use the house phone. <laughs> Wait till you get some calls. I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> 11, 12 o'clock at night, they're yelling at you thinking yeah. that, you know. Um, so uh, I just want to say thanks to Terry, and uh, I'll leave it at that. Uh, it was mentioned that uh, uh, three of us attended the main Municipal Association training session uh, yesterday up in Augusta. Uh, I had the opportunity to drive up with Peter. It was it was great because we had a chance to talk and 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 one of the things that I think impressed both of us was some of the ideas that came out of not just communication but uh, it more in the way of gaining feedback from the community. Uh, and I think some of those ideas that were uh, we were introduced to, uh, we'll be sharing with the council and seeing how it kind of fits into our own comfort level. Of that, but uh, Peter and I both shared uh, the the common view that uh, there's some ways we can get and really feel where are people's priorities, how do they feel about it, certain issues, and uh, it's important because it it diminishes the contentiousness when you feel like you've really you've reached out and you've heard from uh, the community. Can we? That's it. <laughs> yes. Um, Speaking of MMA, uh, being the uh, legislative uh, liaison, I guess is the best way to, to describe it, um, I am hopeful and I will be speaking to uh, Chair Holbrook and uh, uh, Manager Hall regarding setting up a meeting with our local, le local legislators as soon as possible. They were all sworn in today. Uh, cloture is at the end of this month. Cloture is a fancy word for 
they got to get their bills in and what they think they want to put in for legislation, and that is at the end of the month. Um, and I, I just think it's really important for us to have a relationship with the other elected officials in town, particularly the ones who control the purse strings in Augusta, because we're going to have a couple of pretty tough years, uh, I think, um, from a municipal viewpoint. So very interested uh, in, in setting something up on that. Um, Project Grace, um, <coughs> in the season of giving, <laughs> they're also, um, they do gift giving. Uh, I believe they're collecting money and cards and whatever for gifts. Don't forget those recycling bags. I'm going to have to start bringing them to town council meetings again and handing them out. Um, but uh, they are available in Toadie's office. Um, just throw your cans, bottles, whatever, return them to Clink, and they get credited to the heating program. Thank God the heating prices are down this year. Oh, there we go. Like that. Well, I saw them out of Toadie's <laughs> So um, it, it's very important. We have a number of people in this community. You'd be surprised how many people in this community need help with with heating costs, even with the price of heat down. Uh, and last, but well, actually next to last, uh, three ring binder. That's that. I'm looking at Craig back there. Mm -hmm. That um, strange wire that runs through town. <laughs> that has uh, extreme internet connectivity that's going through town and town's connected to it, but I'd like to see citizens connected to it also. So I want to do some more work on that um, and give Time Warner and others some competition, if we can, which everyone's nodding and smiling, that's good. And also, uh, since Sean brought it up, the calendar, uh, we have our calendar where committees and whatever are on, but I noticed it isn't always updated. So that's something to, that we need to work on as liaisons with the committees to make sure your committees, make sure they're putting their meetings up on the SharePoint. SharePoint, is that what it's called? Calendar. That's it. Thank you. Hey, I'm good. Okay. Ed? Uh, <clears throat> just two things. One, uh, I just want everybody to know that I am in favor of the ice rink. I just am not in favor of it having it on the campus. So I don't think that that's the right place to have it um, for a lot of different reasons. One, one primarily the water, and um, we're just too congested. I mean, we've got a big chunk of land, but most of it we can't use. Um, and the other thing is that I'm sure a lot of you saw the article in the paper last week about the clovers. <laughs> I think uh, I think that's wonderful. But it was in Chicago. Had... I'm sorry to interrupt. You. It was <laughs> really? in Chicago paper. <laughs> yes, then she bring bring it up. I'm sorry. It was. <laughs> it was a good year. <laughs> it was. It was Chicago. And I and I just hope that we continue to have good years like that in the whole state, and that the population of piping clovers will continue to expand. What's that? Okay. I'm good. Okay. So I do have um, a few things. The first one is I do have um, some council um, condolences to make to, to family that have uh, lost loved ones here in our community. Um, so we offer our condolences to Leanne Jordan, Giovanni Mazzone, the family of Howard Milton Potter Jr., and to the family of Alan Sampson. Um, so again, our, our condolences to you and your family. Um, I also have for your viewing pleasure, we're going to split these up. These are the um, values and guiding principles that I talked about at the last meeting. So you have a nice nice copy right there to have and keep, and keep right in front of you and collect dust on, a, on your desk. Um, Tom already mentioned the tree lighting, which sounds like a fun, fun time. Cocoa, fireworks, lights, what's not, not, not the light there. Uh, thank you, Jean Marie, for bringing up the Clink program. I just wanted to, I was going to bring that up as well. <laughs> um, about this time last year, I had said, hey, everybody, how, how, how about 15 bags? And I've done my 15 bags, and then I've collected another couple of bags out of this person's house and that person's house. and. 
I hand them out every chance I can get. So, um, you know, the more we can do, the better off we are because um, it's that time of year and it's much needed funds in the Clink program um, to do the fuel assistance. Much needed funds, yeah, I got that. You got that? Okay. Um, of course, we still always love cash don donations for, for the town fuel assistance program. So those can always be made and or check or however you seem appropriate. We're happy to take your money and apply it towards that. So um, the last thing I just want to say is about our next meeting. Our next meeting will likely be our goal setting workshop. And although I, I, I dare say that we might talk about budget, just a little bit. Um, I, I would like to maybe have a little bit of a different approach to the budget discussion. Um, I, I think Sean is making excellent progress and, and, and forward momentum um, with bridging some of the gaps in communication and, and, and trying to work on a new approach. And I, I would like us to kind of have that same mentality coming into budget as far as I, I do expect it to be a discussion for us but let's have a fruitful, productive discussion to really give Sean and the rest of the Finance Committee members the directions to be moving with. Um, rather than that really hard set, it's got to be a zero, or it's got to be a two, or it's got to... We, we, we have a little more fine-tuned detail of, you know, and, and I'm just throwing as an example, but to have that in your mind, what are those details you want to talk about? Is it we want to avoid layoffs? Mm -hmm. and do what it takes to do that. Do we want to honor our, you know, honor contracts? Do we want to move forward with staffing plans or partial staffing plans? You know, the, the, the more key specific notes and then, you know, that doesn't mean a number can't come out, but, <clears throat> but rein that in a little bit and more, you know, goal oriented of what we're trying to do with our budget rather than number and dollar. Um, and of course, just again, friendly reminder, as I mentioned in the liaison assignment, if you have committees, some you might be new with, some are you familiar with, um, or you know those sorts of things, try to think of initiatives and again, those you know to set a goal for ourselves and have those key and how do we want to reach that goal? Maybe your goal is Tigus Park. We want to develop it. Well, what, what's a, what's a what's a strategy to do that? We want one building to share. We want to do whatever it takes to get one building in there. Um, so again, those very detail-oriented goals and strategies of how we're going to get there to achieve that goal. Um, and I do want to say we are probably going to spend a few minutes, thank you, MMA training, going over last year's goals, what we achieved, what we still need to accomplish to achieve those, and hopefully be at a point that we don't have laundry lists of goals anymore. It's just one or two things. <laughs> and maybe quarterly we go over those goals. And see how we're, we're, see how we're my, doing. My thoughts of the workshop setting that we're, we're uh, working on, that's a good spot to kind of... That was something that the workshop picked up for mm. Jessica and Peter and I. So uh, Regular review. At that, so we are now on to item number 12, which is a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Yeah. Second. All those in favor? Have a good night. Thank you. Oh, I'll treasure this. I got it.